How you guys and girls doing today? It's the Finance Man here, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. We talk about everything from crypto to real estate to stocks, you name it. In this video, y'all, I'm giving y'all an update on Basenji Inu. And I know it's not something that a lot of people expect. I'm going to be doing something different. A lot of people, after they upload, you know, a crypto project or a YouTube video on it, they either moons and they update it or they leave it alone and never come back to it. But I wanted to give y'all an update on the projects that die. And I want to give you an explanation and a reason as to why they die and just give you some signs that you can look after uh, or look for you know to show you what happened to it but before we get into that y'all if you enjoy this kind of content please make sure to hit those buttons down below like that like and that sub button y'all so that way this video can get out to more people who need to see it and if you really enjoy this video y'all make sure to hit turn on that notification bell so that way you don't miss a single video and you can hear my beautiful voice every day but with that being said let's get right into it one of the very first things i want to talk about y'all before we even go over the chart and the callers and stuff like that is how dead the chat actually became an hour to two hours before the pre-sale remember in my previous video i had talked about about how the chat was looking good and everything like that because it was so active but the reality of it was once the active competitions ended the chat died and i'm not just talking about like dead as in five messages every you know five minutes or something like that but i'm talking about like one or two messages every hour it got so bad and as you can see as i'm scrolling it got so bad that before the pre-sale the admins came out of nowhere and started talking like the admins that you didn't see until later on at night just started talking just because they were the only ones in chat talking and that was one of the very first biggest flags i was like man it was going from if you left the tg open and you know you didn't touch it for like a couple of hours you would come back to like 1000 messages it went from that to like barely a hundred and i was like and that was just like i said this was the owner this is all the um admins and stuff like that i mean it, it got so bad i was just like wow where did everyone go like that was horrible and then of course we head on over to gym pad and as you can see right here y'all at gym pad it went to around 50 bnb and it's like stopped dead cold and we were just like what the hell is going on they had like over 145 people in the actual vc so i was thinking that oh man it could have a little bit more hype than that it might actually be able to fill it but nope and then it you know went live and after it went live it went from 50 to 70 and then it just froze y'all uh the owner actually started trying to make excuses saying that it was gym pad's fault and that gym pad was the reason why it had stopped uh, because people weren't transactions weren't going through. But after they unmuted chat, everybody even agreed. Not a single person complained about the transaction failing. Everybody was like, yo, my transaction went through just fine. Um, there's just not enough hype. Another big thing that I talked about in the previous video, y'all, is that they had promised a KYC and an audit before the pre-sale was even going to start. And this is a good example right here of the shit that I'm talking about. So Caesars calls one of the hype channels or one of the bigger channels, uh, you know, in crypto period. Right. He had shouted out them. And I noticed a pattern with all of these, um, you know, every single call channel that I was in, you know, hype doge meme coin with low tax, planning on bringing some utility hard cap is decently low this is referred to me by a good marketer he has never led me astray so far but still encourage you to do your own research as it's a new team to me what does that mean that means that because when i was in the actual basenji chat one of the very first things i noticed whenever somebody would ask the question where's your kyc where's your audit they would either not answer the question then when it got time to the pre-sale and people were asking where is it they would all say the same thing oh you know we don't need a kyc we don't need an audit because we're backed by callers you know caesars and venom and travlad and you have to be careful y'all because they like to mix the words together if you weren't careful or experienced you probably would have thought that what caesar said right here was you know he was back in the project but the reality of it is is that they weren't backed at all he just said a good marketer referred him to this project he doesn't know the team personally it even says right here you know do your own research it's a new team to me and that's what every single caller said they were like hey y'all we don't know this team whatsoever but you know a marketer referred me to them that's the only thing we can do and y'all that combined with no kyc and no audit especially as it got closer to pre-sale was pretty apparent that something wrong was happening Moving on to the next thing, y'all. Number three is they decided to go with the subscription model. It's like this new model on Pink Sale that you can uh, allocate a certain amount, but when it reaches a hard cap, the more you allocate, pretty much like a whale farm. It's like the more you can allocate towards the hard cap, the higher chance you have of actually getting a percentage at the end of the subscription. They did that and they set the soft cap over to 50 BNB. And y'all, I mean, it barely passed it. It hit 89, so it didn't even break 90 BNB. And then they were just like, you know what? Let's go ahead and launch. Another big issue that they did was they waited until the very next day to go on ahead and do this instead of actually doing it on the day where they actually had hype around or some decent hype around the project and then that leads us to the final oh and take a look at this i didn't even scroll down to see this uh towards the um you know towards the end because i didn't get into this pink sale uh, subscription here 
But look at that. Owner can stop trades. I never even knew that was right there. But let's take a look at the final uh, result, shall we? And boom. Look at that, y'all. The final result. I mean, it was up here for a split second. And I mean, it looks like this was, I don't even know. This is what, 60,000 maybe? Yeah, I could be, yeah, I could be wrong, but I'm look I think that was 60,000. And yeah, y'all, all the way down to 3,000. Like I already showed you in the telegram, it is a wasteland. They hadn't have a pinned message in there since like a random buy came in that was decently sized. And yeah, the team's gone. I mean, they pretty much abandoned this shit. And one more thing, y'all, go on ahead and listen to this and tell me if this pisses you off or not. So I'm Marka and I'll be the spokeswoman for uh, Basenji Inu Day and I'll be uh, answering all the questions that you guys will be throwing at me. <laughs> yeah, if you could just give us an introduction there. Alright, sorry. <laughs> sure. Uh, I guess you guys have a... Y'all, so this right here was the biggest red flag to me and I just wanted to throw this in. Um, one of the very first things you notice when you go to an AMA is the host and obviously the speaker. Speaker being this orca girl that was meant to be representing Basenji Inu. Uh, y'all, I went through the, all the AMAs and I apologize for not doing this for y'all, you know, before a hand. You know, I had like skimmed through it and stuff, but I didn't listen to the very beginning that would have told me what happened. At the very beginning, it just seems like she's completely nonchalant. It just sounds like she's just like fucking around. I don't know what's going on, but the host is trying to, you know, present himself and ask her a question. And she's just giggling in the background and she cuts him off and says, oh, <laughs> sorry, or some shit like that. I don't know. I don't know what was going on in her background, but some, she was not focused completely on the AMA. It was so bad that halfway through the AMA, I'm not going to bore you all with it, but halfway through the AMA, someone had asked her what kind of guerrilla marketing. Uh, was going to be done and you could hear her keyboard she forgot to unmute and every time somebody would ask a question she would do like a long pause and be like uh and then she would type and type that question in when someone said what kind of guerrilla marketing do you mean because it's in your roadmap you heard a long pause her keyboard was typing and i went to google and typed in guerrilla marketing and that shit she had went to google and word for word looked up what that meant and just read it back to the dude just read it back to the host y'all i shit you not and not only this ama was like this all the amas were like this and one of the biggest red flags like I, no problem with women in crypto obviously not that's not the issue here the issue was she was the only person speaking for the entire team and that's one of the biggest red flags that you notice that can go under the radars when you see one person whether it's a man or woman speak for an entire team like we did not hear um the the devs voice we did not hear hops voice and i think he was like the ceo of the owner of the tg we didn't hear anyone else's voice but orca and like this entire time throughout all the ama she was just so nonchalant and just giggly and fucking goofy and i mean there's a time and a place to be that and i mean like in an ama you're meant to be professional y'all and it was it was just one big joke like you know, now looking back, it's like, wow, I can't believe that this had as much hype as I thought it had, you know? Well, with all that being said, y'all, let me know what you think of this video. I wanted to do something a little bit different because I know a lot of people, they'll just post the projects that they get into. If it does very good, they'll post it again and continuously do updates. If it does bad, they just won't upload it about it again. So I was just like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and upload real quick to show y'all because this could be really informational. And I hope that those who are maybe newer to crypto could learn about the subtle signs that you'll see about a project that's underneath all the hype and all the, you know, potential X's and you can see through that and say oh no this project really is shit and it's just gonna go downhill so let me know what y'all thought of this video and I will catch y'all in the next one the finance man out of here